Hi, Judy from Witch Peacecraft. Welcome to today's video. I've got worms. No, not health worms. Crocheted worms and real worms. My crocheted worms came about because I was watching Wishes for Wings update with Rose Lights Crochet and the ladies this month are donating stress balls. Kudos to those ladies making all those stress balls. They are amazing. I don't think I'd have the patience. But a couple of the ladies who did the stress balls also sent in worry worms and I had never heard of them and was quite curious. So I did some tracking down of links and looking around and it's a lot of fun. Worry worms are random acts of crochet kindness. It started in the UK. I think the Facebook page has about 58,000 followers. And you pretty much can see on Facebook or Instagram, someone post a find a day. Now, they're not all worry worms. They can be octopus, flowers, butterflies. One guy yesterday posted, he was a young guy in his 30s, I think. He found like a crocheted snake about this long. And he was over the moon because he said his nephew would love it. So here are my crocheted worry worms. Some of them have crocheted um, yarn eyes or, and I've left little lashes on and some have the wobbly eyes. The reason I've done like that one, the crocheted eyes or the French knot eyes with the eyelashes is for little ones because these eyes, even though they're sewn on, are still a choking hazard. But this was one of the first ones I made. You chain 30 and then you do the other. And me being me, I have to change it, didn't I? And now I've chained 40. I like them a little longer and I go around the head with two single crochet to give it a bit more of a bigger head. There is a tutorial for these. And that's really bad of me because it has gone straight out of my head. Who does it? I will leave a link to the in the description below. And I'll leave a link to the Facebook page, Random Acts of Crochet Kindness, so you can check out the different things people leave around or do. Like they, they yarn bomb tops of post boxes. I love seeing it every day. And I have enjoyed making these to the point I've made about 10 so far. Some have wobbly eyes, some have the cotton eyes. What they get you to do is... You, they have a card, they have all these things in the files on their Facebook page like a tag and you put with your worm, I am not lost, if, you, if I made you smile please take me home with you. I am your little worry worm, keep me close, keep me near. When you, a worry pops into your head, hold me close and whisper in my ear. I will take away your worry so you have nothing left to fear. They're the cards I printed off for a few of mine with their Facebook page. And your hashtag at random acts of crochet kindness. I think they're awesome. And I am going to do some, leave them around cans. I am going to actually put some of mine. I have a lot of these little like keychain things. And I'm going to put them on a keychain like that. Probably spend the night attaching them to those. I also thought last year in um, August we did Promoting Five or Arts August with Dana from Dana's Wonderlust Crochet. And I actually thought I might do some warrior worms and do carry it into August because I really like making them. The way it works is, I don't know if you can see, but the little hole left is their mouth and then you sew on the eyes or you do eyes. Look guys, this has been so much fun. I have a little craft bag that Colleen, a subscriber, sent to me as a gift at work with little bits of scrap yarn and a crochet hook in it. And I've made these in my coffee break because they whip up really quickly. You can stretch them out, but hey, do yourself a favour. Make some worry worms and leave them around your town to alleviate some of the pandemic fatigue we're all going through. So I hope you stay tuned and watch my video on worm, my worm farm. It is one of my favourite hobbies, talking to my worms, looking at my worms, gathering the worm wing and 
watering it down and fertilizing my garden and the worm castings, worm poo. Mixing that in with my compost. Yes, I don't have great nails because <laughs> I garden a lot, but it is fun. And I hope you enjoy learning a bit about my worm farm. If you have a house with a garden, get yourself a worm farm. You won't regret it. Until next time, take care, stay safe. Remember, life's an adventure, so have an adventure with some worry worms or a worm farm. Bye for now. So, I'm out in my garden. This is my worm farm. It's quite old. I've had it probably about seven years. It was a um, purchased worm farm from a garden centre. As you can see, it's been repaired a few times by thing. But it's still going. So... You have the bottom layer with the tap where all the worm we drips down to. As you can see, I'm emptying it today. I've got a bit of worm we in there. With the sun out, it's going to be quite moist in that worm farm, so I may remove the lid. So there's two layers of worm castings, and the top layer is where you put the scraps and start a new casting. And today's time to ro rotate. So let's have a look. Now we have to be careful this time of year when we remove the lid because sometimes there's a snake in there trying to get warm no snake it's uh, quite moist in there I think with the bit of rain we had and the heat it's got quite cooking nicely I'll leave the lid off for about an hour and let it dry out a bit and I'll add some shredded paper to it but usually it's um, kitchen scraps but not any proteins such as meat milk things like that um, tea bags thing goes through and cuts all the staples and tops off them and empties them in there it's quite productive I haven't put any coffee in for a while um, coffee's not that great for the worm farm but occasionally I will put some in there no onion no orange nothing citrusy because I want a great balance so that's my worm farm. Yes, worm castings. The worms are chewing through the rubbish and making castings. Worm poo, and that is the worm wee. Worm wee usually I had dilute at 50-50. If I put it on full strength on my garden, it kills things. So it needs to be diluted down a bit. And 50-50 seems to work. So all I do is I have no I don't some people bottle it and sell it I don't I just empty it and um, basically dilute it and put it somewhere on my garden over the back of my veggie beds with green crops they're resting once um, they're a bit more maybe next week I'll dig all that in and plant something and that's my compost bin which was bought from a um, garden center and that's in a 60 day resting cycle that needs turning today and I have another compost bin that's sort of that size but two halves for smaller while this one is resting and same with the compost I don't sell it I just one that's ready thing empties it for me because it's quite heavy or reeves and then I sift it through a sifter thing made me which is a bit of chicken wire or fine wire in a frame once it's sifted to make sure there's nothing sticky or stony in there, I put it on my garden. My worm farm. I have made worms. I have worms. When I buy it, when I bought this, you buy a pack of um, composting worms. They're not like garden worms, and they're about I don't know. Now they're about fifty dollars to five hundred. And yeah, I've had composting worms, and they breed. Um, my brother-in-law has a um, brick worm farm. When he bought, they bought the house that was there, and his worm farm is very luscious. He tells me he talks to the worms, and when I got mine, I started doing that. But I said to him, I think my worms are dying. And he said to me, what are you talking to them about? And I said, work. He said, the dying of boredom changed the subject. He's Polish, and he has a wicked sense of humour. But yes, he always asks me, how's my worm farm going? I'm quite proud of mine. Eventually, it probably will get too old and I'll have to get a new one or maybe get thing to build me one anyway guys highly recommend if you have a garden and a small area like I do out the back get yourself a worm farm it's 
basically free fertilizer once you set it up. Okay, bye for now.